Hi, this is the basic principles of hemodialysis divided into two parts. In part one, the principles of hemodialysis. Hemodialysis is a treatment which aims to first to remove accumulated metabolic waste products, to correct the blood electrolyte composition by means of any change between patient's blood and a dialysate fluid that happens through a semi-permeable dialysis membrane and in a flow way called a counter-current mechanism that will be discussed later. Also to remove excess fluids by means of ultrafiltration. The counter-current blood dialysate flow means that the dialysate is flowing in the opposite direction to the blood flow in the extracorporeal circuit. Counter-current flow maintains the concentration gradient across the membrane at the maximum and increases the efficiency of the dialysis. The counter-current approach is used for intermittent hemodialysis to provide the maximum diffusive gradients and the maximum removal of uremic toxins as fresh dialysate fluid is continuously exposed to solute uremic toxins laden blood. The counter-current blood dialysate flow in more in depth, we can find that in the first part of blood entry, the dialysate fluid is already concentrated, but less so than the blood, thus there is still a concentration gradient. While in the middle, the concentration gradient remains the same. The blood is depleted of solid at the same rate as the dialysate is enriched by it. At the end of the blood circulation from the dialyzer, the concentration gradients remain the same. The solids depleted blood is exposed to a completely clean dialysate, and the concentration gradients remain unchanged. So the two fluid exchange solids almost completely to remove solids. This is the more efficient way to do it. Even so, the driving force and the driving concentration gradient is never very high. So we have a blood pathway and a dialysate pathway and diffusion process all through the dialysis. The second basic principle of solid removal is called convection. Convection is the simultaneous transport of solvent and solid, dissolved solid, from the blood compartment to the dialysate compartment. Sometimes, from the dialysate compartment to the blood compartment, and this is called pack filtration, and will be discussed later. Solid transfer across the semi-permeable membrane by pressure makes solid drag and the convection transport across the membrane has many determinants. Water flux across the membrane, more water flux, more dragging of the solids and more convection, pore size of the membrane, bigger pore size, more molecule removal, molecular size, bigger molecules Movement is less, as well sometimes in solid charges. So in convection therapy, we can find that very big molecules like albumin is not removed, while the middle molecules can be easily transported. So in convection, the movement of solids with fluid flow while the solids are dissolved in the fluid, 
This phenomena can be observed during ultrafiltration. And it's the basic principle of hemodial filtration as well. Given that the membrane is permeable for them, and the solutes will follow the ultrafiltered fluid across the membrane. So, movement of fluids carries the dissolved solids. Depending on ultrafiltration rate, transmembrane pressure, and more efficient in middle molecules removal. The convective process requires a fluid movement caused by a transmembrane pressure gradient. Solute flux depends on how much ultrafiltration rate, the solid concentration in plasma water, and the sieving coefficient of the solid through a pressure gradient. In adsorption, with increasing size of the middle size proteins and the other compounds, relatively more clearance is achieved by membrane adsorption compared with loss into the dialysate. A high adsorptive capacity, one of the main features of some dialysis membrane like polymethyl methacrylate PMMA membrane, can absorb more low molecular weight protein than others. Important in removing protein pound uremic toxin from the blood, and this protein pound uremic toxins removal by means of diffusion or convection is virtually impractical. However, protein pound uremic toxin can be removed by using the adsorptive capacity and the properties of particular membranes. While PMMA membrane has higher adsorptive capacity more than in polysulfone. The adsorption happens early on the start of hemodialysis and the protein are adsorbed on the internal surface of the dialysis membrane. While moving of protein from the blood toward the membrane, with time, can induce clogging. And this protein clogging in the internal part of the membrane is called protein fouling. In the basic principles of water movement or ultrafiltration, the ultrafiltration rate is defined as the volumetric flow rate of solvent across the membrane per unit of time. In hemodialysis, ultrafiltration is movement of water across the semi-permeable membrane because of a pressure gradient with positive pressure in hydrostatic as well as osmotic or uncoated pressure of the plasma proteins play how much fluids can be removed. So in dialysis, the blood pressure within the hollow fiber is positive, while the pressure outside the hollow fiber is lower. The difference between the pressure inside the hollow fibers and the surrounding pressure in the dialysate side is called the transmembrane pressure. The transmembrane pressure determines the ultrafiltrate production. So exertion at pressure on one side of the membrane produce a filtration of water with solids as long as they can pass through the membrane. In the blood compartment of the dialyzer, a positive pressure is created when the blood is pumping into the narrow fibers. In the dialysis fluid compartment, there is usually a negative pressure. So fluid moves from the blood side 
to the dilated side and is clearly obvious in low flux dialysis. The pressure gradient created is the transmembrane pressure. So while blood is moving, there is a transmembrane pressure which equal positive pressure in the blood side as well the negative pressure in the dilated side. And you can find that the second part of the dialyzer has more protein and more hematocrit. So here is some concentration of the blood. With maximum ultrafiltration in the first part of the dialyzer and lower ultrafiltration in the second part of the dialyzer. So the transmembrane pressure and the membrane hydraulic permeability or ultrafiltration coefficient regulate the ra rate of the movement of fluid across the dialysis membrane. While KUF means ultrafiltration coefficient of a dialyzer. QUF or ultrafiltration rate and the transmembrane pressure in millimeter mercury. The magnitude of the filtration in hemodialysis is determined by hydraulic permeability of a dialyzer, surface area of the membrane and the pygeometry of the dialyzer, narrower fiber has more ultrafiltration capacity, as well the hydrostatic and oncotic forces acting on the blood, which limits the ultrafiltration. So increased hydraulic permeability, as well increasing the surface area of the membrane, increased ultrafiltration, while increased hematocrit and protein content of the blood limit the ultrafiltration. The phenomena of pack filtration means a situation where there is a transport of fluid from the dialysis fluid side into the blood side. And this is phenomena encountered with high flux dialysis. And it is due to excessive ultrafiltration through the first half of the dialyzer that follow a pressure drop on the second distal part of the dialyzer. And so pressure moves the fluid from the dialyzer side into the blood side. In low flux dialysis, the dialyzer has very limited KOF. So need more transmembrane pressure, so no pack filtration. While in hemodiafiltration, you need to remove excess fluid, so need higher transmembrane pressure all through the dialyzer length, and subsequently no pack filtration. Only on high flux, pack filtration occur due to obligatory fluid loss and the pressure drop. In the middle of the dialyzer, there is a filtration equilibrium point where filtration happens in the first part from the blood side towards the dialyzer side, subsequently a pressure drop. Higher pressure in the dialyzer makes the pack filtration. In hemodiafiltration, no pack filtration due to high transmembrane pressure all through the length of the hemofilter. So water moves almost from the whole length of the dialyzer. 